Let's get this online. Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome back. Welcome back to my four part live event that you are in the middle of. Today is session number three of my number one tips where I'm giving you my best or favorite piece of advice at each step of your job search. Today, the job interview. We're gonna talk about job interviewing and I am gonna give you my favorite tip. Yes, my favorite tip. This thing is simple and it's huge and if you do it, just do it, I guarantee you will get hired even if you trip up a little bit along the way in the interview. So if you are just jumping into this session, we're in part number three. Part number one was a handful of days ago. We talked about resume writing and more specifically how to put together a killer, killer career profile. We also talked over the weekend, a couple days ago, on job search networking where I gave you some detailed tactics, the do's, the don'ts, and all that good stuff. If you have not caught those sessions, they will be up for a limited time. I've, I've, I've gone all out for you on this, on this live event. I created a concierge page that I like to call it. It's basically the event page. It, it shows you the topics, the dates, the times, and all that good stuff. Uh, it also has the replays uh, that you can access. You can also get them here on YouTube. And there's some other goodies and other assets and things that you can grab as well. So check that out. The link is in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure not only because of this event, and we still have another session on salary negotiation coming up in a couple days, but make sure that you subscribe because I give you new weekly videos as well as my live office hours on Thursday. So if you need assets to help you build a career you love, this is the place and I love helping you do that. So make sure that you are, make sure you're, you're subscribed. Also, since we're doing it live, for those of you that are here with me at, at noon Eastern, Eastern on this wonderfully sunny Tuesday. Jump in the chat. Let me know you're here. Always say hi. Let me know what you do. Let me know what you need. Put question marks in front of your questions because this is a lively group, which I love. It'll help me easily find it because we've got a, a good amount of time today for the Q&A. And also, if you're in one of my programs, if you're a boot camper or an I-teamer or whoever, let me know that you're here too. So love, love having you all. Welcome. I see you are all piling in. Everything looks pretty good. Let's get into the agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about just some basics, and I want to talk just. To, I want to mention interview intervention for a for a moment. I do want to give you the number one tip that I want to share with you that will literally transform your interviewing, your interviewing ability, your ability to get hired. I'm going to teach you how to do that technique, this technique, in all three phases of the job interview. If you don't know what the three phases of the job interview are, we're going to go through those two. And then we're going to do, I'm going to talk for just a couple minutes on my, on my job search boot camp, which we've got a promotion that's going to be closing in a couple days. So I just want to introduce the program to you uh, for five minutes, and then we're going to go into about an hour of Q&A. So great to have you. Now, uh, for those of you who most of you know, but in case you do not, I've written three books and the first book that I wrote, Interview Intervention, Communication That Gets You Hired, no job interviewing live session would be complete without me holding this book up and just letting you know at, the, at this moment it's free. This $29 book is free. I bought it for you. I also created an ebook and slaved over recording the audio for you, which you also get for free, and you get an ebook titled How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Ask Before You Take Any Job. Now this book, uh, which I know a lot of you have, and you get free if you're in my boot camp or my interview intervention course, this book, uh, I wrote it a number of years ago, and it's about methodology that I've developed about 15 years ago. If you do everything in the book, uh, the book talks about the reasons why you get hired. It's, it's, it's foundationally based on communication principles and psychology and what's happening when people are communicating. It happens to be written in a job interview setting. It talks about the reasons you get hired, about accurately exchanging information between you and the job interviewer and doing that effectively so that you both are making informed decisions based on reality. 
The entire book is strategic. It breaks it down into processes. It gets very prescriptive as far as questions, answers, your questions, how to get the information you need, thank you emails, all kinds of good stuff. But it's all based on you making a great decision. And if you do everything in the book, uh, statistically, we've been gathering stats for the last decade and a half, you have a 560% better chance of getting hired than other job seekers. And that's pretty awesome. So I want you to do, the good news is you can get the book for free and I want you to do all that stuff. But the other piece of news is we're not going to talk about any of that stuff today. I want to let you know the book is out there for you to go get. I want you to get it. I want you to learn the tactics because it really will help you with your storytelling and your responses to any of the interviewing questions. Any of the interviewing questions. So get that. But today, but today we're going to talk about something even more powerful than reality. Something that that trumps reality on any given day, twice on Sunday, always has, always will. Always has, always will. And that's imagination. Imagination. It trumps reality. It's greater than reality. Always has been, always will be. It taps emotions. And emotions are simply more powerful than logic. They're more powerful than reality. It reshape Our emotions are so powerful that it makes us reshape our logic so that we can talk ourselves into just about anything that we want and rationalize our way to our decisions. Everybody does this. It's human nature. So what I want to do today is I want to show you how you can tap into the interviewer's imagination and position yourself so that they are imagining you in the best light. And if you're able to do that, combined with the interview intervention techniques in the book, I don't know what that percentage is going to be as far as how, how much better you're going to perform than the market, but I'm guessing it's more than a thousand percent. So that's what I want to talk about today because imagination trumps reality. All right, so let's let's get into this. Let's get into this. When you when you are in an interview, sorry, I, I'm really parched today. Mm. When you are in an interview, you want to think about the role you're playing and at that moment you are you are i mean you're the, you're the you're the chief operating officer of your job search until you get that interview you are the chief marketing officer of your resume and you and bringing yourself to market and when you get in that job interview the role you're playing is salesperson and you are selling yourself as is the company to you, but you are selling yourself so that the employer will ultimately buy you. And once they buy you and you become an employee, then you turn into a service delivery person or a customer service person where you actually fulfill whatever it is that they're paying you for. And if you think about the best sales people, they're not the ones that understand the script of what it is that they're selling or all the you know, all the product features and all the niceties of what the service is or the product is, they're the ones who can actually help you think about your future and your transformation. They're the ones that get you to think forward about the art of what's possible. When you see this, you know, you see those pictures, you know, I don't know, on advertisements or whatever, and you got the guy pulling out his hair and his desk is all cluttered, and he's trying to work, and he can't figure it out. And then you see the person on the beach sipping the pina colada under the sun, on the sand, and they say, this can be you. That's what I'm talking about, is getting someone to imagine what's possible. So when you are in the interview, that's your job, is to think about how can I show them what's possible. Now, in doing so, the easiest way for you to think about how to do that and to remember and, and what your cue is, is to think about this one word. Just think about this one word for me, and it's their future. It's their future. It's their future. The interview ultimately hinges on their future, not your past. So let's talk about that a little bit. What happens is a lot of us we get into these interviews 
and we spend a lot of time trying to convey our credentials. We talk about our past projects, all that good stuff, all that good stuff where we're spending a tremendous amount of time talking about our past. And when you're talking about your past, the interviewer is in evaluation mode and it is a huge, huge stretch for that interviewer to draw the conclusion between your past and their future because there are entirely too many variables that they're dealing with at any moment in time. This is how you did it in your environment. And while your logic sounds sound, okay, and it, it, you sound like you know what you're talking about, it looks like you know what you're doing, you're recalling it effectively, but our environment's different. Our environment's different. I don't know if you can actually do it in our environment. So the more time you spend in your past, and the more time they spend in evaluation mode, generally speaking, not always, but generally speaking, the interview is going less good. It's going less good the more time you spend in your past. And what you need to do, what you need to do is you need to get it into the future. You need to get it into the future and you need them to imagine more easily and and even though it's an imagination, you need them to extrapolate more accurately that you can do the job and this is how you would do the job and this is how their life's gonna change and this is how they're gonna grow their revenue and this is how they're gonna cut their costs or whatever it is that you're doing for them or how their customers are gonna be happy, whatever it is. So you have got to figure out how to get the discussion into the future. Now I know you might be thinking out there and saying, well Andy, I don't really, I don't really control the interview and they ask me questions and they always ask me questions about my past, how am I going to shift the discussion from the past to the future? The one thing that I would say is you always keep thinking about their future is you control the interview. Anybody who wants control can get control of the interview regardless of who's sitting on whatever side of the desk. So in a lot of times you're given control right up front. So let's talk about how do, you, how do you shift the discussion into the future at all three different phases of the, of the, of the job interview. And you, know, you think about your job interviews, and as soon as I say, if, if, you have any, if you are wondering what these three phases are, as soon as I say them, you're going to say, oh yeah, of course, that's right. Because this happens at every interview, nearly every interview. There's basically three phases. And most of the time, uh, the entire portion that the interviewer thinks that he or she's controlling the interview, most of the time they want to talk about your past. So usually the first phase of the interview is the tell me, walk me part, right? So tell me about yourself, walk me through your resume, so on and so forth. Well, in the tell me, walk me portions of the, re of the interview, that, I mean, you're, that's all you have to talk about is your past, right? So you're gonna, you're gonna walk through your background or you're gonna tell them who you are or what you're about. And in those cases, if you have not seen uh, the, my uh, videos on the best answer to the tell me about yourself question or the best way to respond to the walk me through your resume, there's two separate videos. They're both very popular. I would check them out to make sure that foundationally you understand what to do in advance of an interview to score big on those two questions. And a big part of scoring big on those questions is doing your homework. And, and that actually is germane to today's discussion is because you can actually blueprint this tip I'm about to give you. So when, when a lot of times when the interviewer initially is gonna turn the control of the interview over to you with the tell me about yourself because now you own it, you can say whatever you want or walk me through your resume, you can choose to, to, to spend whichever amounts of time you want on whichever portions of your resume you want. This is where as you are preparing for the interview, the one thing that you can do in order to make sure that you can shift the interview into the future, you don't always need to do it right at the moment, but I like to tell you to drop the hint about the future. So here's what I mean specifically. As you're walking through your resume or you're telling them about your background, there are going to be some parts of your resume that are more in alignment with the job description and what it is they ultimately want you to do as an employee. In those particular areas, I want you to spend more time explaining what it was that you did. So if you did a project last year that's very much analogous to what you need to do 
in this future job at their company, that's where I want you to spend more time and then I want you to kind of skim across things that aren't as relevant and then I want you to spend more time on the things that are. When you're planning, when you're doing your homework, I want you to make sure that you get some kind of phrase down where you're gonna drop the hint as you're walking them through your resume and you're gonna say, well, this particular project here, this is a great project, as a matter of fact, uh, I can't wait to tell you about this because a, what, from what I saw from the job description, this particular project is very much in alignment with what it is you need me to do at your company. So when we get to the point where you're gonna ask me, I'm sure you're gonna ask me some questions, I, I'll love to talk about a scenario where, where this is applicable to your environment and how I might be able to apply the skills and experience that I learned in your environment. Because the moment you can shift the discussion to how you will or what you would do, that immediately sends the discussion into the future and now they can start imagining how it is that you would accomplish what it is they need you to do in their environment. So I'll be really eager to talk about how I can apply th this particular experience to what it is that you'll need me to do. So you drop the hint. This is their cue. They probably weren't even gonna ask you about some type of situational uh, environment or sit a case study or project or whatever problem it is that they're trying to handle, but you've now planted the seed that you wanna make sure that you cover that when, when, when they start asking you specific questions. All right, that's the first phase of the, of the interview. Second phase of the interview is where they start asking you questions. So a lot of times they'll turn it over to you. They want a little bit of background because they're lazy and because they didn't read your resume and they don't really know you. So they want you to they want you to, to, to talk your way through it. But then eventually they get into some questions that they're gonna ask you. When they get into the questions that they're gonna ask you and you are answering them, I want you to make sure that you do a little tack on or an add-on to anything that you answer that is historical. So let me be really specific. I know a lot of people, they obsess over behavioral interviewing questions, which were the, are the dumbest interviewing questions that anybody could possibly ask you in an interview because they provide no evidence of how you actually will do something in the future. But employers continue to do this. I don't know why. They're gonna do it, So I want, and I don't care about them. I'm an, I care about you because you're here with me. So when they ask you about those questions in the past, Tell me about a time when. T walk me through that project. Tell me how you organized this. Tell me how you planned that. Tell me how you handled somebody this way or that way. Whatever it is that they ask you about that's historical, you know you're gonna go into your past and you know they're now gonna be in evaluation mode. What you need to do is you need to tell your story according to the principles outlined in interview intervention and tell the story, go through all the storytelling principles and all the things that I give you what as soon as you are about to wrap up that story, I don't want you to con turn control over of the interview back to them to let them run wild and go somewhere else. I want you to make sure that at that moment, anytime you answer a historical question that requires any kind of storytelling, because if it requires some lengthy answer, it means it's important to them, that they, they, they want to investigate those skills. Then I want you to immediately shift it into the future, and the easiest way to do that is, so this is how I handled that situation in my past. Do you have uh, a situation at your organization or anticipate one um, where I might need to apply those skills so that I could share how I would handle that in your environment so you'll have a better understanding of whether I'd be a good fit for your company? So do you have an, a, a scenario or an example or a situation, whatever you want to call it, in your company that I could discuss how I would handle it so that you will know whether I'd be a better fit. There's not an interviewer out there who would not want to get that insight from you because that's the insight that they should have gotten in the first place. Whenever you're talking about stuff in the future and I can see your logic and how exactly you would handle it, that's like feeding two birds with the same piece of bread. I'm getting the, under, I'm getting the understanding of what your experience is like if this is your logic and how you would handle it in the future. But people want to spend a lot of time in your past as if they're not sure that you can. I can draw those conclusions if you tell me the route you will take in order to handle it in my environment. So shift it to the future. Then the third part of the interview is when you get to ask your questions. So when you get to ask your questions and you are in gathering mode, now you really control the interview. Just ask them my favorite question, which is, uh, what is it? 
I know you guys have seen this. It's, it's been in uh, many videos, many live office hours. I always talk about if I only had one question to ask in a job interview, this would be it. When you're talking with the interviewer, just ask him or her, if I was to take this job or whoever was to take this job, a year from now, what specifically will the person have accomplished for you to know that it was successful, that, that the person was successful or the hire was successful, whatever it may be, specifically what will have been accomplished, what will have been completed, what will, will have been built, what will have been solved, whatever. Get very, very specific. Now, the first thing about this question is the interviewer should be able to tell you that because if the interviewer can't describe what success looks like to you, you're in real trouble because you don't even know. You won't even know what success looks like as an employee. So most employers will know this. So you want to get them to tell you what that is. Now, if you have the opportunity during your question asking period to then tell them how you would accomplish that, that's cool. Uh, just say, here's exactly how I would do that. You know, I'd like to pause my questions for a second, but I think it's worth me sharing. Here's how I would go about doing it if you've not done that already. But I realize that sometimes it's not always uh, appropriate uh, and, and you don't always have as much time. You know, sometimes they only leave you a few minutes at the end. But if you have the time, go into the story of how exactly you would do that. If you don't have the time, make sure to take some good notes and in your next interview with whoever that might be or another round with this, this particular person, if you're going to have a second interview, whoever, who, with whoever it might be, make sure you are describing how you would accomplish that. Bring that up in some way, shape, or form. It's my understanding that this is what success looks like. I'd love to discuss how I would approach that. And I think that that's valuable for us to discuss. It will, it will, it will show you what I will do as an employee, but it'll also help me better understand how I could go about this, and you could see you know, whether I have the skills and experience. You can also clarify for me what, my, what the expectations are in the role. So, so that's, that's my, my third fair way. So if you think about this. When, somebody, when you're walking somebody through your resume or you're telling them about yourself, make sure you drop the hint. So let's just review these really quick. Make sure you drop in the hint that, hey, this, is, this seems like it's going to be an important facet of the job. I'll really be looking forward to when you're asking me questions if we could discuss a specific scenario in your environment where I would be able to apply these skills or experience so you know how I would handle it in your environment. That's dropping the hint. When you get into when you get into answering your questions, you want to make sure that anything that's historical, anything that's historical that requires time for you to explain step one, step two, step three, and so on, you want to make sure that you say, that's how I handled it in the past. Do you happen to have any specific scenario you'd like me to address in your environment so you know I, how I would handle it at your company so that you can determine if I'm a good fit for that role? So that's the tack on. And then the third thing is when you're gathering insight, make sure you ask the question, what does success look like in a year specifically? And then whether in that interview or maybe even a little in your thank you email, or in the next interview, whether it's in five minutes from now or whether it's in five days from now, you make sure that you include that in your story. So those are the three things. You wanna make sure that you are constantly moving it to the future. And I want, you to I want you to pause for a second. I know a lot of you out there, we've got we got job, we got the job changer. Uh, we got job changers. The salesperson who, who's working at a company who wants to move to another company. It's powerful for you. But think about if you are a uh, a young professional or a college student coming out of school. Think about this. You're a career changer. You don't have the requisite experience. Not always. And it's 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 you know I've I've coached you to make sure that you connect the dots on the capabilities and draw those anal and make those parallels and those analogies from what you've done to what they need but imagine the faster you can get the discussion into the future into the future the more effective your interviews will be because what they're really looking for is do you have the right approach do you have the right logic what raw material am i getting in this person who doesn't necessarily have the hardcore skills to do this job to do this job. That's all I ask when 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 somebody when I'm coaching somebody and they are wanting to change careers, that's all we do. What career do you want to go into? All right, well, let's talk about that. How would you approach that? How how will you tell your stories? How how would you solve those problems in the future? And the more you're doing that, the, the better the interview will go. The better the interview will go. Very, very powerful stuff for those without the right level of experience 
that somehow were able to market themselves effectively to actually get the job interview. So I hope that helps. What do we got? 24 minutes. That's not too bad. If you're liking this, what do you say? Give me the thumbs up on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, on the video. And what I want to do now, what I want to do now is um, we're, we're going to spend a good hour on, on the Q&A today. Uh, but before we get into the Q&A, I want to mention, uh, I know you probably started to get an e you probably got an email yesterday. My job search boot camp, which is my signature course, the last live run of this, it's a seven session program this time. The last live run starts on Friday. It starts this Friday in, in, in three days. So what I wanted to do today, I'm not gonna give you a big long sales pitch. I wanna just introduce to you where some of the stuff is so that you can go off and you can kind of breeze through it and you got a little bit better context of what the overview page is sharing with you. And then you got a, you know, you got a few days here to think about it. Uh, it's, it's a $497 investment, so I want you to have some time. But I, wanna, I do want to, if you'll indulge me for a second, I just want to share a little bit about it. And let me see. One thing I want to do, I want to just switch over. And if you can bear with me here one second, uh, I just want to show you a few testimonials from people who've gone through this program with me this year. This is boot camp number six. We've had like a thousand people, uh, a little over a thousand people go through this program in the last 10 months. And here's just a few of them. I want to go through them very quickly. Cassie, struggling for months, out of work, joins the boot camp, and in three weeks, she gets a job, goes from no resume, to, to, a, to a job offer, takes it, and has a pop. Actually, not only did she take that job, uh, but then she got a promotion within like a month. So, wonderful, wonderful story. Scholastica is a lawyer. She joined in the spring. Uh, it took her a grand total of less than four weeks to go from quitting her job to taking the sessions to getting a substantial pay increase. Kyle is a was a college student uh, he was working on his master's degree. He enrolled in the boot camp, and he was looking for an internship, and ends up getting, you know, some hundred thousand dollar job uh, as he was interviewing. They loved him so much, and they said, "Hey, we'll let you finish out your program. Why don't you come to work for us full time?" Mark Peckney, awesome dude. This guy, project senior project management uh, professional, got into the boot camp over the winter. And, uh, you know, $43,000, $44,000 pay increase. Some of you guys who are on my email list are going to get a little case study on him. Kathy, this one I absolutely love. She is from Europe, moved, had her own company, moves to San Francisco with her husband and her family, has no job, and was a, was a high earner, but now is in between, was meeting with uh, coaches and, prof and recruitment professionals who were telling her that she was nuts. There's no way she's ever going to get a job paying what it is that she wants to get paid. She worked with me. And actually, if you were on my email list, you probably saw her story uh, that she posted on the Facebook group uh, yesterday. Uh, but she, uh, or yesterday in your email, uh, but multi, multi six figure gig. You know, she was over the summer. We've got a whole bunch more people. Dave's a technologist. The things I love to draw out from his testimonial, he, he, and Dave is a great community guy, but he's really embraced the community. It really boosted his confidence. Uh, I don't think he, he felt as confident in his abilities to get what it is that he wanted. Uh, you know, Mike is in the educational field. The thing I'd love to call out here is, you know, Mike was a teacher, but the boot camp helped him refocus what it was that he wanted to do. And he ultimately uh, took a job in a different, within the educational field, but in something else. But here again, the confidence, um, I get this very, very frequently. Uh, Larry was kind of midstream. He was interviewing and then he jumped into the boot camp and went through all the interviewing stuff. $25,000 salary increase. Actually, it was really 30 k uh, 15% bonus on top. Stephanie, a uh, uh, woman in her, in her young 50s uh, in gerontology, uh, interviewing with um, elderly facilities, uh, people that support the elderly, nursing homes, and those kind of things. 
basically gets something that was well beyond what was normal in the market, and she was out of work. And then sometimes I just like to, you know, you'll see a lot of these inside, this is from inside the Mile Walk Academy where people can go in and ask me questions and post comments, but I love this one from Jeff. Um, Jeff is just an, a very senior guy in his mid-50s, uh, was out of work, uh, finally got to me, got him in the boot camp, got this job at Cerner, which, which is absolutely fantastic. So, you know, I always love, you know, I just got done sharing with you about transformation and without sounding, you know, cheek, cheeky, but I mean, these people are just like you. They come from a variety of backgrounds. They have a variety of struggles, a variety of different experiences. But what, what they all got that you can get is this. Um, you know, I want to I wanna just show you the page really quickly. You can see this. Okay, so you, you still got a couple days. So the heat's not on if you're on, kind of on the fence. Hmm. This is the overview page, and, and I don't know if Kara already did this, but knowing her, she probably did put the link in. If you want to see this, this is the page. Oh, yeah, those are all the books I wrote. But here's here. let me just kind of waltz you through what the program looks like for those of you that aren't familiar. Uh, it has five base modules. So historically, the first five boot camps that I've done have all been five module, uh, five modules, five sessions, um, five very deep sessions. They're multi-hour sessions. They got all the tools and templates and all that good stuff. You get lifetime access and you get lifetime free support. So once you enroll, you're in, you're in forever and ever until I die. So if you just want to get an idea of what we roll over, this is the first session. Um, you know, going back to the Mike, um, actually Mike L, Mike Lowry, he he, the focus here, and, and I get this from everybody, and I get this from, it doesn't matter what your age is. Uh, they, they come in, and I constantly get, wow, I did not have an appreciation for my focus and who I am and why I am and what I need and how to evaluate for it. It's very powerful stuff. We assume we know ourselves. But we don't. It doesn't matter how self-aware you feel you are. There is a big difference between thinking you know what you want and having a very detailed approach in order to address it. Uh, the second session is all on marketing. So think resume, all the cover letters, all the mixing and matching, the LinkedIn profile and how to set it up. Uh, session three is about searching. So if you, if you were with me, uh, over the weekend with the number one tips where we talked about job searching, uh, we covered a sliver. I mean, we only covered networking. This is a, there, are, there are six major activities that go into your job search. Uh, I show you exactly how to break them down, specifically what they are, how to address each one of those so that we're optimizing your search for speed your search for speed. And then the fourth session is on interviewing. It's everything you can imagine from somebody who wrote a 33,000 book, word book on it. Uh, we go through negotiating in the fifth session. This is not, here's how you negotiate your salary. This fifth session is when you fill out the application for a job that you want to pursue, from the minute you do that, to the minute you make a counter offer and everything in between, here is exactly what you do at every stage in the process to make sure you maximize what you get paid. But here's why it works and here's why a lot of you, and I don't know if you've enrolled in training from other trainers, but this is the thing about, you know, people say, well, Andy, you know, don't you offer a lot of free stuff? I do. Do I, you know, all the trainers and I can kind of mix and match and pick and choose. That's all great and good. What you do not get in any of my free stuff and what you, will, what you do not get in most trainers paid stuff is a strategy with an overall framework that says end to end, here is how you make all the pieces work together. Here's the structure, here's the sequence. If you do these things in this way, in these proportions, it leads to speed. And by the way, we are here with you every step of the way. So you get access to me and Kara through the Mile Walk Academy. It's like free email service. We have Facebook groups and communities that are incredibly helpful. We had a woman who is in, in Korea wanting to move to Germany. I think I might have mentioned this 
I don't know, a couple days ago, where you know we weren't sure exactly the the exact resume layout they preferred in Germany. And within 10 minutes, we went to the Facebook group and we had the exact spot, exact format, exact template that we needed, and we worked with that. So it's very, very powerful. There's me. I'm sure I say something nice to you in that video if you want to watch it. Um, even though there is a schedule, this is something I get a lot of questions about. Well, what if I can't make the dates? That's okay. It's all recorded, and as a matter of fact, for most of these, right after the session is done, once our platform records it, we do it all through Zoom, uh, then I put it into the training portal and it's there for you. You can uh, download all the stuff, all the audios downloadable, all the downloads, uh, PDFs, and all the templates are downloadable. You get, I give you a year's worth of ongoing coaching, you get some Facebook group support, I send you a free book if you don't have one anywhere in the world, I pick up the shipping as well. Um, this is the schedule. So it starts on the 19th. We run through all this through November 1st. But for the first time, as because this is the last time of year that I'm doing this, I wanted to make sure that I gave you some extra firepower on your resume. This is going to be a total, a very awesome session with just the boot campers. And we're going to go through a lot of resume examples and all the nuances and all the special conditions that go along with writing a resume. I'm a contractor. I've got an employment gap. I want to change careers. I want to... I'm going through all that specifically up on the screen with you. And then in December, I'm going to show you all the nuances about searching at that time of year, which is the richest time of year to be in motion already because employers are dying to get you there in January. There's new inspirations, new budgets, new projects, all kinds of new money, and they need people in their company. How do you navigate... Uh, through the holidays uh, and, and, and making sure that, that you're taking advantage of the richest time of year. So I, I wanted to make sure of that. Uh, for in this package, you get 12 months of ongoing coaching with me. So I have a private monthly membership that some people pay uh, $19 a month to be in. You get a whole year's worth. And then this is the pricing. There's three different enrollment options. Uh, the 497 is what's currently discounted. It's normally 597. So if you check this page on Friday, it'll be 597. Uh, the you can add a a very detailed resume review after you write your resume according to the instructions I give you. I then take it in Word form and I use the track changes and I edit it and I go through it every little letter, every period, semicolon, and bolding, and formatting, and everything that I go through to make sure that that thing sings. And then some people, uh, I added this last uh, round or two, uh, I was getting a lot of requests for, you know, can I just have a session with you? Because I feel like I've got all the right instruction, I'm doing all the stuff, but if I could ask you a bunch of questions or you can kind of, you know, clarify all these things in these areas for me, I would be golden. That is extremely effective. And you can also kind of mix and match. You could, you could buy the boot camp and then just a coaching session without the resume review. Some people do that. So for $9.97, they can have the boot camp and a coaching session with me. And actually what those people a lot of times will do is they'll send me their resume and then we'll talk about that for a few minutes during the coaching session. And then here, you know, you get all my other courses. Um, you know, you get all the individual courses. These are more bite-sized videos. I have got testimonials galore. You're going to be getting these over the next couple days. Uh, I could have spent three hours just walking through all the people, the different countries, uh, the different situations. Um, and here, you know, folks, and, 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 you know, I know you guys see me a lot. Those of you that are with me on these live shows, I am very, very um, dedicated to this and making sure that you get to where you want to go. I am so confident that I can help you and want to do it so badly. I am willing to give you a zero hassle, zero hassle guarantee. 30 days, you can have the program. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to do the resume and send it out to 50 places. You don't have to do anything. If there's anything you don't like about the program, in 30 days, you email me, I hit a button, I give you your money back. So that is, every one of my programs is like that. Uh, I also have a trade-up program, so if you're an existing uh, member of the Milewalk Academy and you've paid $297 for one of the other courses, then you only pay $200 and you get all these benefits. Um, if you've been jilted by another trainer 
in the last 60 days, I'll give you dollar for dollar credit. You, you took somebody's resume, pro man, I wish I, I actually won't do this because I'm not this kind of guy, but I wish I could tell you who, who the trainers are that are out there that I take the most trade-ins from. Um, but you don't like somebody's resume program and you paid $297 for it, I'll give you $197 credit. You paid $97 for somebody's interviewing program, I'll give you $97 credit. So that's all great and good. If you got any more questions, they're there. Uh, but this is something that I, um, you know, I love doing it. It's been hugely effective. Uh, I've got, you know, loads of support and, uh, I mean, the community support that we're going to give you, my personal support. I don't, you know, I don't pawn you off on anybody. If you have content related questions and you're not sure what to do, I answer them for you. Um, we've got a system for that. It's like free email advice around the clock. Well, I, I sleep occasionally, but uh, but I wanted you to know that. So you've got you've got three days or you know two and a half days, whatever it is. You get by Thursday night, eleven fifty nine p.m. Pacific time. So I want to go to the questions, but before I go to the questions, I want to do one thing because I want you to I want to help you think about this. If you enroll now before. Uh, let's say, what is it? 12, it's 11.40, my time, 12.40 Eastern. If we're gonna do the Q, you know, we're gonna do the Q&A for, for a while here. If you enroll before we clip this off, I will give you a complimentary, I will give you complimentary resume feedback. Now, I wanna be very specific about what this is. If you enroll now, and by the way, this goes for anybody, who had, we, I know we've had people enrolling over the last couple of weeks. So if you're out there watching, you get this too because that's only fair. Um, if you're in this round of the boot camp in this promotion, which basically started with my resume writing class back in, in uh, September uh, 28th, I think it was. If you have enrolled or if you enroll before we end this session, I the, the resume review is me going through it and editing everything and track changing and all that good stuff. That's that I that's 500 bucks. But but a lot of you would do well with I instruct you how to put the resume together, you send it to me and then I give you my feedback. So I email it to you, I mark up your thing a little bit with questions and pointers or I give you an audio or whatever it takes to get the point across. I will review your resume in that capacity, meaning I will give you insight. I'm not gonna go through and edit all of it because that takes me a long time and that's why people pay the $500. But if you enroll for $497 now, I will do that for you. Uh, there's only one caveat to that. If you take advantage of the trade-in program and you start discounting the $497, that excludes that bonus. So I hope you understand why that is because I can't keep you decorating. I can't for $300, I'm not gonna review your resume and get you in and give you all those things and the year's worth of coaching and seven sessions and all that other stuff. I mean, that's a deal of deals. So have at it. The link is in the description here or uh, Kara, I think, probably put it in uh, the chat. And now let's let's have a little chat for an hour or however long we can, we can go here and uh, I'll answer your questions. So I hope you enjoyed that. I love this stuff. Man, I love this boot camp. And it is live so we can be engaged. And it is live so I can answer your questions. And it is a smaller group, obviously, uh, than, than most of the weekly shows uh, because there's lots of people that get in it, but only so many people that can make the times. And um, But it's, it's very engaging. And uh, I really, I'd love to have you as part of it. I realize it's an expense. Uh, but it's really a lot of fun, and it's really very valuable. So I hope that hope that helps. Mm. Sea lion, my friend, thanks for being. On t thanks for showing up early, like way early. Ashley, how are you? I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I was timely. Manisha, how are you? And they, hey man, I got a very nice email from you. A nice email or two. You are welcome. Vicky Salazar, how are you? Congratulations. God, you're good. You know what? That's Vicky. Thank you for that. Uh, good morning. I'm two months into my new job, which I love. I never become complacent about being employed again. Stuff happens, and I'm, I'll be prepared for next time. Thank you, Andy. Boot camper for life. She is, and we love her. And, you know, and Danny's a boot camper. And Karen's journey. Oh, 
Karen, how are you? Hey, thank you for the uh, LinkedIn message. By the way, folks, I, you know, I want to help you at the deepest level. And I would love for all of you to be in my boot camp. And I know that that's just not possible. I know not all of you want to be. Uh, not everybody can afford it. And, and not everybody needs it. And not everybody needs it. But you are all welcome to link up with me on LinkedIn. I've got a huge network and you can at least take advantage of my network. And I'm happy to do that. And all you need to say is, hey, Andy, I'm in your community and I'd love to connect. And I just can, and I, I accept that. I, I, I very much appreciate that. And so, Karen, I appreciated your, um, you know, I, I appreciated uh, your, your, your LinkedIn message uh, yesterday. May, good to see you. All right. Ingrid, how are you? Ingrid's a boot camper. Wendy is a boot camper. Then there's me doing something. Manisha from New York, originally from Mumbai. Daniel Gomez. Daniel Gomez, man, you got to say, via, from Perth, Australia, now living in Florida. Wait, so I don't know if you guys know So I ship this anywhere. Perth, Australia is the farthest place on the planet from where I live. It's still seven bucks to Perth, Australia. If you don't have this, get this. Get this. It will help you. It's free. It's free. Well, it's $7 shipping and handling because those warehouse guys in McHenry, Illinois, I mean, they, I, I tried to, you know, chisel them down, but they just wouldn't. All right. TMT, how you doing? Kristen, good to see you. She's a boot camper. Good luck on that. Rory's a boot camper. How are you, buddy? That's the zombie review. Madison Joseph, wow, I caught you live. All right, hey, Madison, can we all give Madison a big, you know, uh, clap? She, uh, I, I, you know. Lots of luck there. Lots of luck there, Madison, tomorrow. Patricia, how are you? Delma, great. Oh, Antigua. Gary Madrid. How the hell you been, man? Where you been? Cindy Dunn, how are you? All right, let's see. Anybody got a question? Shannon was having a problem. D Rowley from the backyard. D, it's nice and sunny. You're that way from me. I'm assuming the I'm assuming the stream health is okay. All right, wait, I got a question. Uh, hey, Cecilia. By the way, folks, Cecilia is in the Mile Walk Academy, and she frequently can answer your questions as intelligently as I can in the Facebook group. All right. Thomas, how you doing? Steve, great to have you. I get 1983. Hi, Andy. How to address during an interview the issue of not finishing a PhD I did full I did full four year studies, but I haven't defended my thesis. The true reason is my boss, I don't want to talk bad. So here's my suggestion. Um well I I know you always want my <laughs> that's the point of the questions. You never ever need to defend not finishing a PhD or a master's degree. Actually, most of the time, you shouldn't even have to finish or defend not finishing a bachelor's degree. Um, you've obviously gone through the studies. You've done the schoolwork. And I know what you mean by defending your thesis. You can't get the PhD without doing that. Uh, but I, I don't know that you need to defend it. I don't, I don't know. Um, so, folks, and, and as much as possible... And don't get me wrong, I, I don't mean that you never have to clarify anything. I, I think you, you, you do in many cases in an interview. But I always want you to focus on who you are, not who you're not, or not what you haven't done. And there is no shame or any explanation necessary, in my opinion, unless a PhD is required for the role, that you would have to explain that. And so... What's wrong with, I didn't have time, I didn't, I'm working now, I haven't gotten to my thesis yet, I haven't gotten to defending the thesis yet. I, there's a lot you can, you don't have to, I wouldn't even get tangled up in that. Actually, that was my, that would be my recommendation, is something quick and painless and get it over with, I haven't had time yet. That's all I'm working, or whatever I'm doing. I, you'd be sitting on a beach, I don't care what you're doing, you don't have to defend that. Q Patterson, Q Patterson, uh, 
I don't know. It uh, Q. Q says, I have the book, meaning this book, but not the audio or ebook. So, folks, if you want the ebook and the audio book from me, uh, there is a page. Uh, you can go, just go to milewalkacademy.com. Right at the top, you scroll down like this much. There's me in a little video that says, hey, take, you know, I got this book and welcome to the Mile Walk Academy and make sure you grab one. And then there's a button and it takes you to a page and then you go and you put your name in and then you pay the $7 shipping and handling. As soon as you pay the $7 shipping and handling, it launches you into the Mile Walk Academy where there's a card that says interview intervention. It's got like a couple cans, like from the original, you know, kind of the original format. And the ebook is there, it's a downloadable PDF. And then the audio is sectioned by chapter. So I do like a welcome and backstory, like what drove me to do this. And then, you know, chapter one and chapter two and so on. Then there's even a chapter in here on the 14 most effective job interview questions. I recorded those separately. So you can kind of pick and choose and listen to them on your way to the interviews. Right, I'm always thinking of you. Um, if Q, if, if you bought the book from Amazon and you did not um, get the book from me, then you might you won't have gotten the ebook and the audiobook. I mean the ebook's on Kindle and in iTunes and iBooks and, and Nook and all that stuff. But you gotta get the book from me to get access to all that stuff. So um, I don't if if you did get the book, then you need to check your welcome email, click the link and it takes you to the spot. So I hope that I hope that helps. And Danny, Danny, in your uh, your boot, uh, I think you're a boot camper, right? So there's an interview intervention card. Click that, and then it's on the, it's on the sidebars where you can download it. All right. Yeah, Madison, get the book. Thomas Mintz have a phone interview today. Any tips? I do. I would suggest you go to the Mile Walk uh, blog. Go to my, just go to MileWalk.com or AndrewLasavita.com. Type in phone interview, type in phone interview, and there's my eight tips, and just follow that. It's about a six minute read. All right, Q Patterson. Yeah, by the way, okay, so I just got to Kara at 11.05. If you've got the book already, you don't want the book, then email support at milewalk.com and we'll give you access to the ebook. Kristen Morrison, how are you? That's true. John, you're late, but you're here. Swati, relocating from abroad. How do I research people in my target companies for the boss hunting strategy when I have no LinkedIn first, second, or third connections and can only find details of the CEO? So. Swati, when you search in LinkedIn in the advanced search, you don't it, you don't have to have any connections to search. Uh, people will come up; they just won't have any relationship, and you don't. It, it doesn't matter. So go to the company and look at. So um, what you could do in LinkedIn is in the in the search bar, just type the company name, and then it'll show you all the employees, and it will tell you that you're not connected to anybody because if you don't have any connections. Uh, but it'll show you all the employees, so you don't have to worry about that. Zipping on down, bunch of thumbs up, love it. I don't know what I said there, but may oh, was that? Were you guys giving me the thumbs up in the chat, and I might click the like button? Actually, if you are enjoying this, click the like button. We are in session three. Uh, we got one more session on on Thursday. So click the like button, share it too. Let people know about this. Um, and I think I think we just had a nice little plug. Out. Hey, Stacy, how are you? Love having you in the community. Vicky says boot camp is amazing. She's 53 and never thought I'd find a job again after 27 years at the same job. Folks, in the boot camp, in the boot camp, here's what the demographic looks like. Okay. Uh, by the way, apparently it's uh, leaf blowing day, and in case you can pick that noise, it's a guy standing right outside my window. Uh, the boot camp. So we've got some in their twenties, and a bunch in their thirties, and then more in their forties and fifties, and in their sixties. So 
the the demographic uh, and it's not everybody. I mean, but it, there's a spectrum. But whether it's um, you know my age, which is 52, or you know been working 30 years, or the who, the demographic I connect with, but we have, or it's just the fact of the matter is there are a lot of you in you know in your 40s and 50s and 60s who are going through job changes that ha you know you haven't changed jobs or you're re-entering the workforce after being a stay-at-home parent or there's a million reasons or you want to make a career change or you're more willing to make a career change we get a lot of those people too um but trust me when i tell you i have got loads and loads of success stories on that one on the on the, the page that i gave you uh with the 10 testimonials most of those people are in their 40s and 50s some of them are in their 30s kyle's 25 and, uh, but man, we, we've got, um, I, you know what? It doesn't matter what your age is. We will, I will help you get whatever it is that you want. All right. Lynn, great question. So this one is, uh, and by the way, I, this is Kara. We, I, I believe we have this on the content calendar about how to get the job without the right experience. Uh, Lynn and Lynn T and everybody else, one thing I would highly recommend uh, as a resource for you, if you are a college student without a lot of experience or you are a career changer without a lot of experience, excuse me, I have 10 steps to win the job interview as a career changer, okay? You, you will, it is a wonderful 10 step formula that goes through everything that you need to do in order to make sure that you are responding effectively. That could have been titled 10 things to do when you don't have the experience. But I mean, I can only title these things so many different ways, but that specific video will be gold for you, Lynn, any college student, anybody without the right experience, and anybody who is changing careers. And when you, the one very important thing that you need to do when you change careers or when you start out uh, in your first job because you don't have a lot of specific work experience, um, the most important thing in a job interview, so, so go check that video out, but I, I want to, you know, because you asked the question, I want to give you a little something here. One of the most important things is identifying what the capabilities are for what it is you're interviewing. So, for example, and Lynn, I don't know what your um, what your uh, uh, what your uh, field of study was, or what you're what you're going for. But anybody, like, if somebody's looking to be in engineering or a project manager or something like that, if you're an engineer, they're looking for logic skills, analytical skills. You want to be a good communicator, but you need to be good with numbers and all that good stuff. You're going to be a project manager. You got to be organized. You have to have good customer service skills. You have to have good planning skills. You have to have good management skills and so on. Those are just foundational traits, okay? So you need to learn what those are. Then you need to figure out in your studies, in your school, or in your internships, or in your summer jobs, whatever they might be, how does what you did apply to those capabilities? And that's how you manufacture your responses and your stories that you're gonna tell about how you have those traits. So I don't really care if you were a valet or you worked at Nordstrom for your summer job or whatever. Uh, you know, did you get, you know, you know, I was responsive, courteous, you know, customer service, I was organized, I had to manage the keys, whatever it was, figure out how to draw those parallels so that when you have no, you know, hardcore work experience in that environment, you can pull from things that you've done. If you don't have summer jobs and you don't have a ton of work experience, then go to your school projects and what what major projects or major studies did you do or lab work or papers you wrote or whatever that, that can be applied. And that's what I would do. But I would really check out uh, that uh, 10 steps to win any job interview as a career changer. I think that's the title of it. Um, but that's that's really uh, a good one for you. It's about 10 or 11 minute video. All right, May Young. Oh, May. May, 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 May. I wish I could tell you this one. I get this a lot. Should I change careers and start over just for job stability because my job title has been outsourced 
or should I keep looking for the same job and risk getting laid off again? May, I cannot answer that for you as much as I wish I could. Um, that's a personal situation and you know, there's umpteen different factors that go into that. Um, you know, how patient are you? How much grit do you have and risk can you tolerate? Um, you know, how much do you hate your job or field or whatever it is? How much do you love wherever it is you want to go to? And so on. I, I, I can't answer. That's a, that is a personal, personal situation. Um, but uh, one thing that we do do, and I, I don't uh, you know, know, know what your intention is, but that, that's my answer to your question. For all of you out there that have a question like that and are not sure, the first thing we do in the boot camp is we try to get you sure. We try to look at your requirements and how they map to. Sometimes, sometimes you are not as miserable in your job as you think you are. It, when you truly break it down and you look at the sore spots and then you figure out how to cover those up or improve them. Sometimes you're more miserable <laughs> you actually thought or you really are going to run out of steam. We're just showing you sooner that you're going to run out of steam and, and, and or, or we're showing you how to head it off. We're showing you how to head it off. And in some cases, we're looking at people who do want to make career changes and we're trying to dial them up to, is that actually the career you want based on these traits, based on your requirements, based how much you want this stuff. So that's session one of the boot camp. When I said starting in the right place, that's what it, it's about. Um, you know, I don't know if that's in your budget or in your if you're interested, but that is the first thing we do. That's the first thing we do. Okay. Shannon Valentine, great. Melly. Great to see you. Gary, hope you are doing okay, and I hope the whole family is okay, and people are not getting sick, and people are not getting car crashes. Um, I know it has not been easy for you. Steve, great to have you. Madison, Joseph, I pulled the meeting minutes for my interview tomorrow so that I can speak to the future needs. How can I best integrate the, this knowledge? So, if you've got, when you say meeting minutes um, and it's the interview tomorrow, I'm assuming you mean the job description or l the topics. Maybe sometimes they even give you topics that they want to talk to you about. Uh, what I would say is you just, if you follow those kind of the three segments that I gave you, moving it forward. So, so I want to make sure that as I'm discussing my background, I'm, do you have a situation in your environment where I need to apply what I've learned and can we discuss that, how I would handle that? so that you can get a good illustration of how I would go about that. I would just keep pushing it forward. I mean, it's just like what we went over. Just like what we went over. Candace Stevens, I have a, I, okay, wait, I'm getting a thoughts question. Candace Stevens, I have a master of accountancy, but have not worked since then. Okay, since I didn't conform to the traditional path, I am both overqualified and underexperienced for positions so far. Candace, I'm not sure who told you that, uh, or, or if that's a conclusion you drew on your own. Uh, but if you have a master's degree in accounting or a bachelor's degree in accounting, or if you're a CPA or not, or whatever, if you don't have the work experience, you're not overqualified for anything. So I don't know what your previous, um, I don't know if you had a bachelor's and then a master's and now you're coming out and you're not working and you didn't work for the last four years. Um, but trust me when I tell you, uh, unless you're going to tell me you have, you know, 20 years of work experience and, you know, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. And I don't think that, I don't think that way. Don't get me wrong. I know that there's overqualified situations, but whenever somebody's overqualified, by the way, I have an overqualified video out there. It's a short clip and a not so great quality video because it was taken off one of my, uh, monthly things many, many moons ago where we didn't have near the quality of the high def and all that stuff. But, um, but when you are overqualified, if somebody gives you that overqualified bunk, then what you need to do is you need to talk about how, to, how would you, number one, how could you elevate the role to justify the expense and get out the value? Or you need to go down, you need to go lower and say, I'm willing to do that 
and as an entry point into a great company. And there's different routes to handle depending on your situation. I would check that out. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't think you can be overqualified and underexperienced. They just don't, that just doesn't go together. Q, you're welcome. Pansy, hey, good to see you. Ed Devine, what do you got going for me here, Eddie? Oh, good one, Ed, good one. Okay, uh, and I don't know if ever anybody understands what Series 6 and Series 7 and all that good stuff is. Don't worry if you don't. But in the financial services arena, there are different series certifications that allow you to perform certain functions on behalf of your clients and your companies and so on. Ed is basically saying many financial services jobs require a Series 7. He has a lot of industry experience, but his Series 7 expired because you got to renew it every so often. What is the best way to still apply for these positions? And Ed, what I would do, assuming you want those jobs... Um, and by the way, I am not a lawyer and I, although I play one on TV sometimes, um, there are, because of that particular job, there are some legalities in what you can do if you are a series seven or not. Assuming you are not running into legal issues for any of you that have any certification issues like this, what I would do is I would say, you know, I would tell them you had it, it had expired, you intend to, to retake it and refresh it or do whatever. And what some of these companies will do is they'll actually pay for it. Some won't, some will, a lot will, depending on which institution you join. Um, but if, if I had an, uh, uh, a certification like that that was a big deal and it expired, I would just say, I had it, I intend on, on re-upping it in the future and, um, and, and go from there. And, and, and that's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get in the interview. You need to exchange the dialogue verbally about that. But I would apply anyway, assuming there were no legal issues. All right, Q Patterson, please give an overview on your approach to cover letters. Are disruptive cover letters a must? Q Patterson, I do not ever use the word disruptive because I don't like it. But that's okay. I know what you're getting at. I like you because you're here. Um... The four sentence cover letter, the boss hunting two cover letters I give you, the seven sentence cover letter for no job opening, just go get those and you will see my philosophy and each one of those has a video and you will be covered. Um, and those are the shells. And I don't know, I, I don't, here, okay, wait, I, I do want to say this. Um, You do not need to be a disruptor to be effective. Um, you need to transform somebody's future. How you do that, I really don't care what you call it, but you know these people, I see them on their headlines and their other things and in their job descriptions, and I just kind of laugh because, you know, all, all, you know, I don't need a disruptor. I don't need a bull in a china shop. I need somebody who's going to come in and move the needle. And to me, I don't need to, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know what you'd call the education I give you guys. I think, I watch some of these other trainers out there and their stuff is very, very basic. And I know that that appeals to a lot of people. But I just gave you a tip today on moving your interview into the future. I don't know how many trainers, I've never seen a video out there about that, and I've never seen anybody talk about it like that, and I've never seen anybody draw these parallels, and so on. I don't think that's dis this is disruptive. I think this is giving you more advanced techniques, and I know you all are smart enough, and I treat you with the respect that you can absorb that. And I am not going to try to dumb down my material to, uh, you know, because some other trainers are, you know, appealing more to the masses. I'm, uh, I'm giving you everything I got and I'm giving you the most advanced techniques that I know will work. I don't think that that's disruptive. I think that's just better stuff. So, um, and, and, you know, I don't shoot to be better. I shoot to be unique, different, and give you the best. And I don't really pay attention to what a lot of other people doing. And I think people who want to be disruptors, they have to hang on to what normal is 
and then they have to say, well, I need to break that. And so I just don't, I don't like analogies like that. That has nothing to do with you. I, 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 I appreciate, you know, that you're here and you're with me and I know you, you're, you're, you're in here a fair amount and I love that, but I, I just don't, I, I think that's just a, um, a catchy little word and it'll be gone shortly and I try not to hang on to trendy things, um, which is, you know, this book. This book will never go out of style because it's written based on communication principles. The Hiring Prophecies will never go out of style because it's written based on psychology. That matters. Foundational stuff and stuff that is tried and true will always be with you. So if you get your job and you move on and you go on and you don't see me for a number of years, my guess is I've taught you a lot of things that you will hang on to and apply in your job. And that's the kind of person that I want to see. And if you can roll that into your cover letters about your accomplishments, you will win. And if you use those shells, I guarantee you, I've laid the foundation for you to do that. All right. I don't know. That was just a uh, cue that had nothing to do with you. <laughs> so I just, you know, that I think that struck a chord. I look younger? Reef. I'm getting old, man. Oh, I look younger than 52. Thank you. Wait, by the way, can I ask you something? Wait, you're my people, and I know a lot of you know me pretty well. And I have been hesitant to do this, but can you tell me in the comments if you... And it's okay if you say no, because that's totally okay. I have not yet shared with you a lot of my personal routines. I've... I've um. I've given, I've started to give you videos on organizational stuff and my journaling and things of that nature. But are you, is anybody, does anybody actually care about my routines that give me this much energy? Why I can go 16 hours a day, never get tired, always be here for you, work out every day, eat right, sleep right, all that stuff. Um, I, 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 I don't know if that's, you know, if that's something you're interested in. I'm happy to share that, shoot that, and all that good stuff if you guys would love to know it. I've got morning routines. I've got excellence planning routines. I've got dietary things that I do, um, and, and that's what keeps me going. And it matters, and I've experimented a lot. I don't know if anybody's interested in that stuff, but I'm happy to share it because I think it's, you know, a lot of you can benefit from it. But let me know, you know, you shoot it down. I said that at 12.11, so I'll look for the chat when we scroll down to 12.11 to see if you guys want that. And if you got anything that you actually want to know, let me know. And if you got anything that just general topics that you want me to shoot or talk about in the live shows each week, let's do that too. I'd love to share that, man. I, I'm happy to share my what goes on behind the screen. All right. Sam? Okay, wait. I, I got to read this because I'm, I'm thinking, Sam, this was from Saturday. Andy took your advice and started the ball rolling on contacting network affiliates. I can already say I'm blown away when colleagues are so receptive. Why? <laughs> Don't be blown away. That stuff works. What I'm telling you works. Okay. Shannon just bought the book. Oh, Shannon and everybody else, open the card in the Mile Academy on the right-hand side or at the bottom, depending on the size of your screen. It, or if you're on your phone, it's at the bottom. If you, The sweet thing about the Mile Walk Academy is if you go into each chapter, there's a player right there. You can click it. If you don't have internet access, you can download the MP3 and you can listen to it on the go. Uh, but it's in there. And so, I don't know. Shannon, if you cannot find it, you email support at mywalk.com. We'll get right back to you. Kara will send you the link directly to the spots. All right, Gary, thoughts are with you. Madison is talking. Would you consider I think you're talking to Candace? Steve. Okay, Steve has, Steve at 1204. Is there a relatively specific amount of time a person has been unemployed that takes them out of the running completely? Great, great question. So, um, the, the, the answer to that question is no. Uh, I'm a, Steve, I'm, I'm hoping you were with us 
when I showed you the Jeff, I think I hit his name, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff B, Jeff Brewington. Um, he was out 19 months and he got a top shelf job at Cerner and he's in his mid fifties. So Jeff's a couple years older than I am. And we've talked on the phone a few times and, um, 19 months. He, 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 he was actually, I, 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 I don't want to share too much of his personal story, but he, he was trying some tactics. They weren't working. He, the tactics he was deploying were not very effective and he tried them for a long time and he was not getting anywhere and he joins the boot camp. And as he was going through, you know, money's running out. This is, this is a common story. And he started taking some odd jobs and things of that nature, but he kept plugging at it. I'd check in with him from time to time. And sure enough, he got a job at one of the best software companies in his space for what he did. And that was exactly his line of work and his field. And he was out almost, what was that, like a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Uh, so I hope he's an inspiration for you. Uh, it, you know, the, the most important thing about being out. So actually, I think the more important thing that Steve and everybody needs to know about being out of work is what are you doing while you are out of work? I'm cool with, if you're 55, you know, I don't know how old you are, 45, 55, 65, and you say, I've been out of work for a year, but I've been working hard at trying to find the right company. I had to do some soul searching. I got myself in order. Maybe you did some consulting work. Maybe you did some volunteer work. Uh, maybe not. Maybe whatever. But what are you, what I'd love to hear for all of you, by the way, we're going to shoot a video on this. Um, if you are going to be out of work or you like, you want to take some time off or, or you're out of work and you're start, it's starting to go like three months or whatever it is, make sure you're taking training. Make sure you're trying to get some certs. If you're in sales, take some sales training. If you're in technology, take some technology training. If you're in project management, make sure you get your PMP certification. Just do anything that looks like you're working toward. So while I had this chance to go and be unemployed, it was a blessing because I got myself in order. I got to search, be thoughtful about what I targeted. I went and got some credentials that I was looking forward to getting, that I was having a harder time while I was employed, and so on. That's a positive story. So I don't really, you know... Yes, I get it. it. You know, the longer you go, the less good it looks. But it's not insurmountable. I hope that helps. Ed, you're welcome. Tam Tammy Ann, good to see you. My Academy member, a darling, I will say. Thomas, great. Bakasar, great. Tom, I do care about that kind of video. Oh, okay. Oh, so the, oh, this is the yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to shoot this stuff, man. I, I let you into my life. I, I think it's great to let you know, uh, you know, and I, I realize not everybody works out of their house uh, and can only, you know, do my morning routine. But, you know, I mean, it, there are certainly things, um, you know, that I can I can share with you I think will help you. And that's my goal is to help you. Um, great. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, all right. That's awesome. I It's kind of a little nudge I need. Sometimes I need some encouragement too. Um, all right, Stassi, Stassi 16, I think that's next, right? Uh, should we be rewriting our career profile summary, interview elevator pitch when career changing or simply owning where we've been? Uh, that is not too vague. You do not need to apologize about that. And that's an awesome, awesome question. Okay. So, uh, Stassi's asking if you're changing careers, should you alter that career profile? Yes, yes, because you want to slant and highlight the stuff that you are, that while, yes, it's about what has been, it's also a lean towards where you want to go and you want to try to pull forward in the career profile, you want to map the capabilities uh, of the future job and how you accomplished or developed those skills, especially in the core competency section. You can, you can take some liberties to talk about how you develop those specific competencies that, that are in tandem with the capabilities that you're looking, uh, that, 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 that the new job requires. And to the extent that you can massage that and be, and be truthful, I'd want you to do that. I'd want you to do that. 
So yes, and your elevator pitch can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, you know, what you've done. It's nice if you can say, well, and I've been doing this for 10 years, um, but you know, you can, you can take some liberties if you want. I would do, I would. Wendy, I'm happy to give you those. Ingrid, I would appreciate, yeah, the organizational routine, how you manage your time with many projects. Actually, folks, one other thing. Okay, so so Ingrid, th thanks for that to prompt me on something. So you all, a lot of, you know, you show up a lot of these live sessions each week. This happens to be a, a whole, like on a bonanza that we're going in the middle of right now. But I have, if you, now, I want you to go in the boot camp and you get 12 months in my career coaching, my monthly coaching. In the, in the monthly coaching, I go into other things about much more on career development, organizational stuff, um, everything that has to do with you being a great employee, in addition to some job searching stuff. But I give you a lot of the job searching stuff in the programs and coaching in the programs. So I like to spend the, the, the monthly coaching uh, going over some of that but spending also a fair amount of time in, you know, in, in the organizational stuff, in the productivity stuff, in the habitual stuff that you should do each day, the productivity tips, the organizational tips, how you plan, you know, when you start a new job, how you make sure that you get off running quickly, uh, how do you, at this moment, I don't care who you are or what you do, how you position yourself for your next promotion this minute, right now, whether you just got one or whether you're overdue or whether you're doing a year. We go through a lot of that stuff and that's the $19 a month program. You just pay it, you know, $19 a month. It's a steal because you get all the past stuff too. You get the last two years worth of monthly sessions and those all have things you can watch. And then you get attendance as long as your membership is up. So, um, you know, Ingrid gets a year of that because she's in the boot camp, but, you know, th th some of that stuff's in there too. Uh, Mary, yes, I will do it. Danny, yes. Lisa Yates, how are you? Oh, cool. Oh, what makes me me? Oh, goodness. Um... Yeah, I, uh, what makes me me is I care more about helping you get to where you want to go. And I am willing to spend the time and give you everything I got. And that is, and I mean that, and that is a pull. I, like, when I, when I go live, like, so I went live Thursday, Saturday, today, Tuesday, next Thursday, Friday, we're going live again, win the boot camp, and then Tuesday, Thursday, and Tuesday, Thursday, the following weeks. I mean, I love those days because this is the best. This is the best. I love this. You give me energy. Uh, I could go all day and it matters to me and it means something to me and I love that I can help you and that makes me me. And, and, and everything else just contributes to that. But always at the forefront is how, am I, how can I help you? I, I genuinely mean that. And I hope you believe that because yes, while I would love for all of you to enroll in my boot camp, um, I'm gonna keep doing this whether you're enrolling or not. And you know, because I, I wanna help you. And I know that only a small percentage of you will get in or can afford to or whatever. That's totally cool. But that isn't what makes me me. What makes me me is that I want to help the whole community. And I also like to think that the stuff that I give you, um, you know, I had, I had a couple of goals this year, just a couple. And one of those goals was that everything that I do this entire year, we're now in October and this started back in, in January, that my free training would be the second best training that you could get that was available to you even better than other people's paid training. That's why I call it moving the free line. You got free books. You got webinars that are huge. I just did a three hour and 15 minute resume writing class on the 28th of September. This stuff is here for you. I'm trying to make it as available to you as possible. I mean, I do need to run a business, of course, but you know, I think you know when you get into whatever profession that you wanna do, and you do it for the right reason. The joy is in the doing. And that's what keeps me going. That's why I don't lose energy. That's why I show up. And that, you know, and 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 it's because of you guys. And 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 yeah, I'm 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 self-driven, but but there's a pull toward what I enjoy doing, which is helping you. So that's, you know, I, a lot of these trainers, they they become trainers because they don't wanna they don't wanna be around. They just wanna shoot their videos and that's it. Goodness, I, I'll quit. I said this the other day. I'll quit. I'll quit before that happens. Oh, cool. Yeah, wait, Manisha, this is really good. Uh, interested and in, curious about what makes me tick and uh, the energy and where it comes from. And 
and lifestyle is very important. And one thing, one thing I will say, actually, I want to, I want to say this because I actually want to write you an email about this. Um, and and I, I know we got still got quite a few people here to hear this. You will never, ever, ever, ever. I cross my heart. Will never send you an email of me on vacation telling you about how I'm tired and needed to recharge and you could have this lifestyle too because that's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, I mean, think about, I build my life so that I don't get tired and I don't need a vacation because the joy is in helping you and I can't do that from the beach unless I'm writing my next book, okay? So anybody that needs to escape and needs to share all that crap with you, I don't get that. And this is not being a martyr. I work because I care. And I want to build a wonderful business that, that helps lots of people, either free or paid, and that's just me. Um, but you have to set your life up and you have to clean out a lot of things that are not as important to do that. And I've done that. And it's taken some discipline. And I, you know, I always say, you know, my line, my today's line to live by is, you know, if you want to go up, there's plenty of things you've got to give up. Now, I have given up some things that I didn't anticipate I would have to give up or maybe cut down a little bit, but that's okay. I, because I, when I started and I planned this profession, I didn't know all of what it was going to entail or what I was going to make of it. Those are choices. Those are choices. I'm not going to lose energy because I make choices or I got to work harder. So, you know, I, I just, I get that. I see that. I just, I've left my trainers who do that to me. I don't need to see, I don't care if you're on the beach. When are you going to show up for my monthly call and help me? <laughs> That's what I want. So this is good. I, you know, I'm going to have to rewatch this session and, and see what I sound like. But uh, I know in my head, it, it's coming from my heart. All right. Jason Garrity. Hey, I don't know your name, man. Uh, welcome. Uh, great. How do you answer the question why you left your previous employer when it was a layoff and received a severance package? Want to be honest. And here's what I love. Just say that. Just say that. So here's what all, 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 all you folks that were part of a layoff, um, the great, now there's nothing good about you being laid off, but the great news is about your ability to explain it is like this. Because you were let go, and you were part of a layoff, meaning it was a cluster of people that were what we call uh, a reduction in force, a RIF. Uh, it's not a great acronym, but that's what it is. Um, so it's a reduction in force, and you were not surgically mo removed, meaning, I, Jason, they came in to see you, bang, boom, bullet in your head, you're out. Okay, that's you just got fired because your performance was bad and all that. That's I'm not going to even go there. But if you are part of a let go, and it's a group, it's a division, uh, your company got bought up, uh, your company decided it was no longer interested in the market which you supported, whatever it is. All that stuff, all you need to say is, you know what, I was recently part of a reduction in force. There was you know, 100 of us, 1,000 of us, or whatever, 50, 5, or whatever, five, 10, doesn't matter. I was part of that because the company decided and you know, from a business standpoint, I truly understand it. I loved working there. I loved, I enjoyed working there, but I totally understand why they needed to do it. It makes sense. Even if it doesn't make sense, just it makes sense from a business standpoint. So this gave me a great opportunity to have a fresh start, really think about where I wanted to take my career. I did my homework. I came up with my requirements, you know, whatever you did. And now I'm bringing myself to market and I feel great about it. And I'm looking for my next, you know, my next employer where I love working just as much or more. And that's it. That's all very positive. And there, I'll tell you what, if you said that to me, I'd say, okay, next question or next thing we want to talk about. I don't even like that to me. That's a plausible explanation does not need to, regard. you could, you'd be done with that thing in under a minute. And that's how I would package that. And it's very believable and it's very right. So cool. Um, Lisa Yates, I interviewed for the ideal position this morning. Yes. Will you do me a favor if you are still here and send me an email with the outcome or the next steps or whatever it is you're going to be doing. All right, folks, we're coming up. Uh, I got another one here from ISIS. How are we doing? All right. We're almost, we're almost at the 1230 mark. Folks, I have no idea if anybody is buying anything uh, or enrolling in the boot camp. If you are on the fence, please do this because you have the 30-day 30 30 guarantee. 
you will get the resume feedback from me. You get the 12 months of ongoing stuff. You got to do it before Thursday. But if you enroll today before we cut this off in a couple minutes, um, you know, you get you get the resume feedback. That's my incentive for you to kind of do it and not stress me out at 11 o'clock on Thursday night when, you know, you guys are all emailing me with questions. It just drives me nuts. <laughs> And that's the honest to goodness truth. Okay, Isis Ramirez, I have an interview with my bosses for a different position in our department. Great. However, one of my bosses doesn't like me for the job. How should I approach it in the interview? Okay, so um, if one of your bosses doesn't like you for the job, I'm assuming that means that one of your uh, one of your bosses, it's not that your boss doesn't like you. It's just that, that he or she doesn't think you're the right match. What I would do before, because you, because this is a little different situation. You can actually probably go talk to this person, he or she. And I would just say, what are some of the areas, or, or maybe you know this, but I would, I would, wait, either you know it or you should ask it. What are some of the areas that you need to cover in order to be right for the role? Okay, and what I would make sure that I do is much like we talked about in this session about the um, about making sure that you are focusing on the future. You want to talk about how you would do this this role and what your techniques would be. And so, it, what would be really sweet is if if you were able to. See, and I don't know what your uh, the landscape of your company or environment is like and how cordial your relationship is with, with this particular boss or if he or she is like in the next office or whatever. But if you can get any time in advance of uh, the interview, I would try to do a little, I hate the word, but a little politicking or a little kind of plead in your case and, and, and how you would, fo here's how I would do it. Uh, if there's a gap in the experience, here's how I would get up to speed on it. And here's the extra effort that I would be willing to put in because I really want this promotion and kind of have a heart to heart with the boss and maybe, you know, work, work the angle a little. We don't talk a lot about that in these tactical how to uh, sessions, but ISIS, I mean, I, I, I would do that. I would plead my case. I really would. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, Jason, hope that helps. Lisa, will be looking forward to hearing from you. Everybody else, I'm cutting it, but hit the thumbs up button if you like this. If I didn't, if you got any questions or you think of any questions that I didn't get to today, drop them in the comment section when this video is recorded and then placed up on YouTube, which is which won't be in like however long it takes them to process it. And I'm back on Thursday with salary negotiation, and I got a tip of how I would handle that, kind of like we did today. Um, and the boot camp, this promo expires Thursday. But if you're not sure. If you're not sure, get in. You can always, I mean, I don't think you will, but you, it's guaranteed. It's 100% risk-free. So until Thursday, I will see you. Everyone have a great one. And uh, I'm super pumped about Thursday too. <laughs> All right, I'll see you then. Take care.